Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing The Way of Edan by Philip Chase. I'll go ahead and pop the, the cover up on the screen because I'm not going to want to hold that book and flop it around. It'll make too much noise. So I'll go ahead and pop that up on the screen. I have some notes so that I don't forget anything or make any mistakes with what I say. So I'll be referencing these and uh, let's uh, get into it and tell, I'll tell you my thoughts and how I felt the good and the bad of this book. So just to give you a little bit of a, you know, overarching idea about this book, uh, let's get into it. The Way of a Dan is the debut novel of fellow booktuber uh, Philip Chase. He runs a channel uh, on here. I'll, I'll have it linked. And he has been working on this book for on and off the past 20 years or so. That 20 years of work definitely comes through in this book. You can really tell he cares a lot about this story and storytelling in general. If you haven't watched his channel, um, I'm a big fan. I, I will say that as I get into this review. So I'm not, not going to, you know, praise it for anything. Uh, I don't have any like personal relationship with him, but the care he has for stories is definitely evident in everything he does on his channel. As I said, I'm not going to sugarcoat it just because I enjoy his channel. This book was definitely a mixture of high highs and uh, low lows. There are definitely some, some peaks and valleys that I encountered in my uh, experience reading this book. You can definitely feel the classic fantasy tropes, the, the almost Lord of the Ring-esque kind of feel to this story uh, in the way it's written and some of the tropes it uses. For some, that will be a nice cozy blanket to curl up in and enjoy, and for others, it will drive you insane. Personally, I ended up somewhere in the middle with this book. The high highs and the low lows kind of even themselves out. Um, the first third and the last third, I really enjoyed. I thought they were great. The storytelling and what's happening in the plot itself was great, and I really liked that. The middle third of this book, though, uh, definitely is a different story. I ended up giving this book a three-star rating, so that means I liked it. If you haven't watched my How I Rate Books uh, video, you can check that out. But yeah, basically a three-star means I liked it, it had some problems, so I didn't really like it, but I liked it. Overall, it's a fine book, and I would recommend it to most people. If I broke this book into sections that I mentioned before, I would have given the first third probably a four-star, that middle section probably a two star, and the last section probably a three star, maybe a three and a half. I don't normally do half stars, actually I never do, but for the sake of this, I would say it was probably like a three and a half closer to a four star, but not all the way there. So let's get into some more specifics on what I liked first, and then I'll go into some of the things that I didn't like, and we get into those lows. Let's first talk about the positives, and that is going to start with the world, build world building of this story. I don't think it's unnormal to say that most authors know a lot about their world. Obviously, they're the ones who wrote it, but Philip definitely has like a historian's knowledge of the world he has crafted. He feels like the kind of author where if you got the chance to talk to him, you could ask him, hey, what was going on 250 years ago in this part of the world? And he would be able to go into a novel length, you know, story of what's happening there, how the political happenings, um, countries away affected that country and you know probably just pop out a whole nother novel that is the level of depth I feel comes across in this story and that Philip really knows the story he's trying to get across and he has created a vast world that includes history you know that we can all enjoy that being said I actually really highly recommend having the uh the map in in the book you know pretty readily available throughout the story you know he mentions places uh, where whether it be from traveling a group of people from somewhere political things that are happening uh, in different parts of the world and I think it's a uh, it, it enriches the you know reading experience to be somewhat familiar with the geography and being able to flip kind of back and forth to see you know where characters are and what's going on in those places next up for the positives I will mention the magic system I am not normally a fan of soft magic systems but Philip did a fantastic job crafting this magic system I'm normally the kind of person who likes to know kind of the extent of what magic can do you know I want to know how I can tell if somebody's powerful and I want to know what can and can't be done and then how it's also done so the fact that Philip created a soft magic system here that I enjoy is a real testament to the skill he used crafting it the magic system feels bigger than any one person it all feels very interconnected with the greater world and it feels very ethereal 
it just you know kind of gives you that sense of awe when people are using it and interacting with it. And there are some cool things that the magic can do. So you still get some of that almost hard magic-y, you know, we're not talking about Gandalf chanting and something happening. You know, we still kind of see some of those splashy effects that, you know, I personally like in my fantasy. Some of those displays are, you know, like lightning fireball kind of things and the ability to control monsters. I don't think that's too much of a spoiler, but it, it feels, I don't know, it's just cool. It, it, and a soft magic system that feels cool is, is a nice change for me as somebody who normally prefers the hard magic style. Speaking of magic, I'll move into the next thing I liked, and that is the priest of this world. They have, you know, a way they interact with the magic, and I really enjoyed all of the priests. I'm very often a fan of religion in fantasy books. I really think it's a good way to build out the world and kind of show how people interact and it can help build different factions throughout a world if it's used, you know, you have one religion that's here, one, one that's here, and that is a, a strong positive for this book. Philip specifically uses these priests to show that while they are using one set of beliefs, you know, to uh, conquer or, you know, come up with a common goal, that each of the high priest or you know, supreme priest might not feel the same way as each other and seeing that political maneuvering that they have going on with each other man that takes some boxes for me i really like that political you know motivation that is kind of going on behind the scenes and the personal motivations that some of these characters have and so i'm just going to count all of the priests as a positive here even though they are all very much different characters from each other with different motives and everything but yeah super strong positives with the priests one other character that I want to mention here as a positive, she doesn't even get a lot of screen pa or page time, not screen time, <laughs> you know, to book, uh, is I'm going to, I'm going to pronounce it as Sequoia, Sequoia. Um, she's not in the book, you know, a whole lot page count wise, but I really enjoyed all of the moments she has in the book and she's a huge, huge, you know, positive in this book. Those are the biggest positives that I wanted to mention. There are a few others, but they're mostly smaller and uh, I'm going to stick to some of my bigger things. And now we are going to get to some of the negatives, some of the things that I did not like and that did not work for me. The writing itself, the prose itself was very, very hit and miss for me. I've seen both reviews that really like it and they mention that it's a positive for them. And then I have also seen reviews that are more with me. Well, not with me. I didn't hate it. But I have also seen some people talking that they hated the prose and that it was just written at a level that they didn't like and, you know, it was a huge negative for them. During that middle section of the book that I mentioned that I would give a two star, it really dragged on me. There are some other things going on with the plot that I'll mention after this, but some of the writing that happened in that middle section just really, really grinded on me. And I don't know if it was so much the writing, if maybe it was more of the plot. It, that combination of the two though really stuck with me and it was a really big negative. It really hurt my enjoyment. There's a one scene in particular that I'm thinking of that involved the seagull that I just, uh, you know, it, it wasn't for me. And uh, I know the writing actually caused somebody I talked to, they really didn't like it. And it's actually the reason, one of the main reasons that they DNF'd the, uh, the entire book. Now, I am definitely willing to say that some of the things that Philip is going for in this book just went over my head. I just didn't get it. Um, if you don't know, Philip is kind of a, he's a medievalist. He has, you know, very strong knowledge of old English, old Norse, that kind of things. So I think a lot of the maybe names and locations and, and uh, some uh, different languages he's going for and using, uh, you know, derive their roots back to that. And it's a real life thing that he's pulling. And, and for some people, that's actually gonna be a huge positive. They're going to love that. For me, as someone who, who just doesn't care, um, it's, a, it's a huge negative. Uh, I think I would enjoy listening to Philip talk about those uh, than actually reading it. And there are some sections of songs and chanting that go on in this that are you know in a different kind of language and it kind of got to the point where i would just skip over them i wasn't getting anything out of them uh, and they you know just didn't they didn't seem to matter i didn't think there was a way i personally was going to be able to take anything out of those so to me there was no reason in spending time reading them other than you know a cursory glance so i know there are going to be people that you know really connect with that that you know they have those same kind of interests in the old English world that are going to like that. But for me, yeah, really, really hurt my, really hurt my enjoyment uh, a couple times throughout. 
In my positives, I mentioned some characters that I really liked. And uh, here, in my negatives, I'm going to have to mention our most main point of view character, whose name happens to be Day Raven. Day Raven is a character who made choices that just annoyed me. More than once. Uh, several times throughout this story, I just wanted to like shake him and yell at him and be like, what are you doing? Th this makes no sense. This is so far off the, the plot that has kind of been laid out for us at this point in the book, uh, for the one instance I'm definitely thinking of, and you know, it's just really frustrating. Dayraven seems like a character who can change a lot throughout the course of the series, but in this book, which is all I can base it on, and not, you know, hopes of the future, is very frustrating. He, he just, man, he really grinded my gears, especially, it's that middle section of the book again, that first that first third with Day Raven, I really liked. I thought it was compelling. I wanted to kind of see how he handled the situation that he had been put in. But that middle section, he just made decision after decision that I just could not understand, and it was very frustrating. Sticking with characters, I have got to mention probably my biggest negative of all has to be two characters that are introduced right in that middle third, you know, somewhere in there, you know, estimate wise, uh, there's two dwarves that are introduced to us. I hated everything about these two characters. They, nothing, nothing about these characters I liked. I wish they didn't exist. I don't like anything about them. I hated how we met them. I hated how they basically made the plot do a complete 180. Complete 180. I, I hated the situations they took our characters into, the things that our characters did with the dwarves. I hated everything about it. I didn't care. And there's a lot of lore that kind of gets uh, expedition dumped on us by, by one of these dwarves, and I hated that too. It felt a little clunky, and I just, I didn't care anything that happened with the dwarves. And I know I listened to a talk with Philip and a couple other booktubers on some of the things he was trying to do there, and while I appreciate what he was trying to do, I just didn't land for me. I really hated those characters. I I think if uh, they weren't in the story, I would have enjoyed it even more. They completely derailed the plot, and um, while we still get to a point that makes sense at the end of the book to end there, the path that we were on, I think, would have been something I enjoyed more. And because of these two characters that I hate, took us, and like I said, they made us do a 180 and go a completely different path. And that was really frustrating for me as a reader. So my last overall kind of thoughts, you know, those are my negatives and positives. I want to say that I think this is a pretty decent first novel and introduction to a trilogy. I really think this book laid out the chessboard for us and that going forward, we can really kind of dive forward with the plot and get some very interesting character growth uh, and some character decisions that are going to have to happen. I think there are some things that Philip could do with some characters making decisions that will just be fantastic. And so I am actually really looking forward to the next book. I think, you know, if, if it goes in directions that I like, the fact that this was only a three-star book will be worth it because the next two will definitely be at least four stars. At least four stars. I don't give out many five stars, but I think they can at least hit that level of like, I really like these books. So that's what I'm hoping for. And uh, I would recommend this novel, to, especially to anybody who really likes classic fantasy. You know, think of the Lord of the Rings kind of fantasy. If you like that, you will probably enjoy this book even more than I did. Let me know if you have read The Way of Adan by Philip Chase down below in the comments, or if you plan to. I'm totally down to have some discussions about it. If anyone has questions in the comments, let me know, and I hope you have a good one.